Welcome everybody. Uh, this activity, String Art, um, started um, life in a Year 10 class that I had where we were introducing linear functions. The task itself is probably two periods in length um, and includes some stuff for the students to do either in class or at home depending on how much time you have to devote to it. So the first thing in string art is just to introduce the notion of um, that sort of 70s style artwork where they were able to um, simulate little curves by just having nails hammered onto a block and draw string lines between them. So in this fairly simplified version, um, I think it's important that the kids uh, are able to um, construct a picture of what they're trying to do with technology a little bit later on. So I um, would give them a grid and on this grid I'd ask them to, to locate an origin for a Cartesian plane and then to um, mark some uh, points on the outside of that grid and then to join lines to simulate um, a simple string art design. Um, as the one that's shown there. So, um, give the kids a, a little bit of time to do that because um, they have to, and I always suggest with these things that kids do it in pencil because they don't always get it right the first time. So th that's step one. Step two is to get them to um, work out what the equation of the lines would be to create it. If you just focus on the first quadrant, what would be the equations of the lines that would help them construct such a design? So um, when I first did this, I did this with a year 10 group and it was really just a revision of um, some coordinate geometry stuff from year nine. And I did this as an introductory activity. So you'll see an example of some student work there on the screen um, where there were two points that they had to um, determine what would be the rule for um, a line segment um, leading, uh, joining those two points. So I think you can see how both the gradient and the y-intercept can be constructed. So. Um, that's quite laborious, um, but it's an important thing for the students to be able to do to make sense of what happens a little bit later on. Um, I think normally I would um, make the construction of the rules, uh, completing that a homework task um, because it is a bit time intensive. Having done that, um, I asked the students um, when they put in the rules to leave them as fractional um, forms for the gradient and the uh, y-intercept. And um, the reason is uh, obvious a little bit later on. But this represents, I guess, um, some completed rules for um, uh, pairs of points that might have been done. Okay. Now, having done that, without saying anything about the correct answers, we asked them to um, enter those rules and uh, on the calculator in the graph page or the graph um, application and to see uh, whether their rules are, are going to create the same design for the first quadrant part of that um, string art. So the instructions there sort of lead, lead the students through how to do it on the calculator. Um, and uh, you need to set the window setting so that it is in, I suppose, a, a true scale so that um, the squares and the grid lines are the same on the x-axis as the y-axis. So if all has been done well and they've entered the rules that they've calculated, they should get a design that's something like this. So the idea is that they've entered the rules. Of course, the rules don't start and stop where we might like, but um, they still should give um, an indication of, this, of the pattern that was required.
Okay, now, after having constructed it by hand and to test them on the, um, the graphing app of the calculator, we'd now like to take a little bit further and um, see whether there's anything more that we might do in the coordinate geometry sense. So in the table that you see on screen there, there's just a collection of um, the x1, y1, x2, y2, the coordinate pairs that have been used for each of those line segments. And from there, you can see that there's, there is a pattern. So for example, um, the x1 values vary from 0 up to 9 and the Y1 values are always on 10 um, because they're always on the top of um, the grid, um, the sample grid we used. And uh, alternately, uh, for X2, Y2, the X coordinate is fixed and the Y coordinate is descending um, from 9 down to 0. So these are sort of ways of generalising what we're doing and the idea is to build up to a general form um, of the equations or the sets of equations. So you can either do it, in fact it's probably better to do it with a new document rather than the same one. Um, you can ask the students to define um, the lists. So um, put in a list of the X1 values using the set parentheses brackets and similarly um, for um, y1 which is always 10, x2 which is always 10 and then the set of the y values. On the screen on the right you'll see that information entered in. Now having done that it's possible to construct a new variable called the gradient or m in this case which is based on the values of y2, y1, x2 and x1 and it will generate all the gradients that you are using in that first quadrant set of lines. Similarly, you can calculate all the y-intercepts that are corresponding. And so in that screen on the bottom right there, you can see that um, we have now a set of gradients and a set of y-intercepts and they can be used to construct um, the equations. And this screen shows that it does work. That is, that if you had defined the M and the C, you can just type um, F1 of X is equal to MX plus C. And you'll notice that it's created all of them in the same color. We've defined it all as one function um, and it might be necessary, um, depending on how your calculator has been set up, for it to... Notice mine doesn't show the labels. Um, there is a setting to make sure that it doesn't automatically show labels. Um, but I'll let you um, work that out. Okay, now, if you have constructed that, it, it occurred to me that you could probably get them to construct the other parts of that um, string art design just by doing a transformation of what you've done in the first quadrant. And I found from experience that this works quite well provided you lead the students through. It does depend on their experience level with functions, but um, typically my year 10 or year 11 classes um, do require leading through the notion that um, if you're wanting the equivalent set of lines that would be in quadrant two, that um, it's um, a transformation of the ones that you did in um, quadrant one. And in fact, what you're doing is you're just saying, okay, the, the equivalent points would be, say, for example, the point 10, 9 in the second quadrant would be the point minus 10, 9. So in a sense, what you're doing is you're changing the sign of the x-coordinate and that can be reflected in the construction of the rule that you would need for F2, um, the second quadrant set of lines, F3, the third quadrant set of lines, and F4, um, the four, fourth quadrant. So just to summarise, because it takes a little while to, to go through this process, 
this shows the result of such a process. So you'll notice the top right screen is the original um, set of lines. Uh, the one on the top left, the second quadrant um, set of lines, is uh, obtained by just saying that F2 of X is equal to <coughs> F1 of minus X. So you're changing X to minus X. In quadrant three, um, both the X and the Y are changing signs. So it's not too difficult to see that um, F3 of X would be minus F1 of minus X. And then finally, the bottom right quadrant four, um, it's only the Y that has changed its sign. So F4 of X is just the minus of F1 of X. That is the um, Y value in the original thing has just had its sign changed. So um, students, in my experience, um, find this quite a satisfying activity, but um, my advice is that is that it's worth going quite slowly in this section um, because you're abstracting um, quite a lot by um, by making these um, constructing these rules, which are transformed versions of the original rule. Okay. Now that's not the end of the problem because um, there are more things that you can do and this sort of depends on the students um, and their uh, experience of algebra and their facility with um, working with functions. Um, you can inquire a little bit further about whether it really is a circle that you've constructed um, and you can ask them to modify it. Would it be possible to modify it so that you made it look octagonal? Um, would it be possible to make it so that the string art design had the similar shape but smaller? That is, I suppose, the radius, if you call it that, is less than the one that's there. And there are further ones in the task, such as would it be possible for you to position the design not centered around the origin but centered around um, uh, another point on the plane. So there's plenty to work with there and um, I hope it goes well for you when you try it.